proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Our story is entitled, Mama's Boy. It's the story of a young man who never spent a night away from home or mama until he joined the Air Force. It's also the story of a mama who would have thought a lot more of the Air Force if they permitted her to tuck Sonny Boy into bed each night. Well, both of them grow up in our story, which unfolds in just one moment. But first... If you're an ex-serviceman experienced in a critical skill needed to keep America's air defense strong, well, then, by golly, you're in luck because the Career Incentive Act opens up a new opportunity to the Air Force and to all veterans of all the armed forces. Yes, indeed, if you possess one of the skills the Air Force needs, well, you may qualify for the United States Air Force, and in a gray that will be a real pleasant surprise to you. The Air Force needs men skilled in many, many important fields. So put your service-earned experience to work to your best advantage. As a member of the Air Force team, make the credit you've earned toward a comfortable retirement payoff. So for complete details, write or visit your Air Force recruiter. Ask for the special prior serviceman's folder. See what a return to the service as an airman can mean to you. Remember, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now, your United States Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, Mama's Boy. Every now and then, I run into some of the guys who were in the barracks at Sampson Air Force Base a couple of years ago. At that time, I was a training non-com, and I saw them come and go. When they finished up with us at Sampson, they were ready to become thinking, working, functioning members of the Air Force. Now, our job was to ease off the rough edges, to make the transition from civilian to airman. So, as I say, from time to time, I run into guys. They're mostly non-coms now themselves, specialists of one kind or another, and it isn't long before someone says, Hey, whatever became of good old Ralph Dunning, Jr.? I tell him good old Ralphie, Jr. is an instructor at auto mechanic school. When I say it, the guys kind of wink at one another as if to say, Good old Sarge Tully. What a sense of humor. But it's the truth, believe it or not. And they say, Mama's boy, an instructor? It's the end of the world. One of them summed it up very neatly when he said, well, if the Air Force could make an instructor out of Mama's boy, Ralph, then the Air Force can do anything. I think so, too. That's why I'm going to tell you Ralph Dunning Jr.'s story. I know it pretty well because in those days, I was the only friend Ralph had. That's because I got big shoulders and he needed one of them. Ralph came from some city in New York State, Albany, or maybe it was Rochester, who can remember. Ralph was 20 years old and he lived with his mother. He used to do a lot of listening in those days. Is that you, Ralph? Yes, Mother. Where have you been, dear? Oh, out walking. In this weather, I wonder you didn't catch your death of cold. Change your shoes, I'll fix your hot drink. But I, I feel all right, Mother. Now, please, Ralph, you know how delicate your health is. All right. Oh, Ralph, I've got some good news for you. I told Mr. Hawkins over at the office that I simply had to have a raise. Now you'll be able to start college in the fall. Isn't it wonderful? Well... Isn't it? Well, Mother, I... Are you trying to tell me you don't want to go to college? Now, after all the plans we made? Mother, Mother, don't say we made plans. You made the plans. I I'm not sure I want to go to college. I see. Mm -hmm. You want to be like your father. He was satisfied to be a laborer. Pop wasn't a laborer. He was a skilled craftsman. He was the best automobile mechanic in town. I tried, Ralph. I did everything I could to make something, to make somebody out of him. And I failed because, well, I may have been too easy with him. But I won't make the same mistake with you. You're going to get somewhere in life. 
I'll work my fingers to the bone, but you're going to have your chance. Mom, Mom, don't think I don't ap appreciate... <coughs> oh, you caught cold again. Go to bed immediately. Go ahead. All right, Mother. I'll bring you some aspirin and a hot cup of tea. Would you believe it? At the time, the guy was 20 years old. Okay, don't laugh. Plenty of guys snap to when some woman cracks the whip. Who's the boss in your house, hmm? But I digress. Well, Mrs. Dunning had Ralphie's life neatly staked out. But as was said, the best laid plans of mice and women. Well, Mrs. Dunning lived in a world of her own where she called all the shots. But there was one outfit that never heard of Mrs. Dunning and her plans for Ralph. This outfit was and still is the United States government. The government had the most peculiar idea. Peculiar, that is, to Mrs. Dunning. That mean old government figured this way. We live in time of stress and peril. If we want to keep our country, we have to defend it. So therefore, every able-bodied young man must be ready for military service. Ralph Dunning Jr. may have been the apple of Mrs. D's eye and the center of her universe. But to the draft board, he was just another eligible. And they uh, sent him a notice stating that fact. But you're just a baby. Oh, but mother, if they want me... Well, they want me. It'll interrupt your entire college career. But, Mother, if everybody has to oh, please, serve... Please, Ralph, let me think. Now, if they draft you, where will you be assigned? That's a consideration, too, you know. Oh, perhaps it would have been better if you enlisted. Then you would have some choice in the matter. Now, where would you like to go? Where would he like to go? Well, he'd like to go anywhere, as long as it was away from home. But naturally, he didn't say that. So Mama started studying up on all the armed services. And when Mama was through, she knew more about the military than anyone in town. And Mama made her decision. One day, she announced to Ralph that he was going to enlist in the Air Force. And so they visited the sergeant at one of those little booths that you see in your own town. By an odd coincidence, I knew the sergeant. His name was Drake. Now, he was a good man. He had to be to handle Mama. Of course, Ralph. I'd like to fill you in on the career opportunities there are for you in the Air Force. My son's career is already mapped out. We've chosen the Air Force as the least likely place to do him any harm. Oh, I see. Well, uh, Mrs. Dunning, uh, Ralph will spend four years with us at the least. Four years in his early 20s, an important part of his life. They won't be wasted. We want to develop his capabilities. He can train for a great many jobs, develop skills. I dare say. Really, Sergeant, it is quite unnecessary for you to sell us the Air Force. We've already decided. Now, what Ralph is interested in now is pertinent information. Uh, what papers does he fill out? Where does he go? What does he do? Um, Mrs. Dunning, naturally, I'm interested in getting enlistments for the Air Force. That's my job. I think we're a great organization. I know we have something to offer. But Ralph himself hasn't said a word since he walked in here. Now, I hope you don't take offense, ma'am, but which one of you is enlisting in the Air Force? I am only trying to help my boy. Ma'am, I'll tell you quite frankly, if he joins us, he'll have to help himself. Ralph, you want to join the Air Force? Oh, well, uh, well, Sergeant... You see, I haven't ever been away from home before. Uh, Ralph, and... the Air Force is best. But, Mother, I've never been up in a plane. Well, it's true, isn't it, Sergeant, that a great many Air Force jobs don't involve flying? Oh, yes. You see, dear? Mother knows best. Sergeant, aren't there some forms he's supposed to fill out? Well, I come into the story round about here. Ralph arrived at Samson, alone. By alone, I mean without Mama. He was assigned to what we call a flight, which is a group of basic trainees in this case. Now, in addition to my other duties, I was in charge of his barracks. I saw his crowd arrive. And they were a good-looking bunch of youngsters, highly spirited, full of fun. So, here was Ralph Dunning, Jr., away from home the first time in his life. And you should have seen what he had with him. Hey, fellas, call a sergeant. Oh, what's the matter? Something wrong? Here's a guy opening a drugstore in a barracks. Hey, 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 what do you what do you do with all these medicines here, Dunning? Opening up a dispensary? Oh no, no, Sergeant. You see, I'm kind of susceptible to colds, and I've got to take my pills. Oh, uh, what's uh, what's in this jar of salve here? Oh, well, my skin is very sensitive to the sun. This is a special ointment. Oh, special ointment. Well, now look, Dunning. 
Don't you worry about anything, huh? We got some good doctors on the base. Now, I should say we got as good available medical care as you'd get anywhere, if you need it. Well, this isn't because I'm sick, Sergeant. This is to keep me from getting sick. Yeah. All right. Well, get your sleep. You're going to need it. Oh, brother, who's going to keep me from getting sick? Uh, what did you say, Sergeant? Nothing. Nothing at all. It was a nightmare. The barracks got off on the wrong foot on the very first day. The inspecting officer found dust under a bed. Whose bed? Do I have to tell you? He found clothes improperly arranged. Whose clothes? You got one guess. He tried. But what can I tell you? The fellas were a little rough on him, and you couldn't blame him. After all, we could have been the top barracks on the whole base if it weren't for him. The result was they'd fix his bed for him so it would collapse. The minute he'd lie down, they short-sheeted the bedclothes, they hid his equipment under his blankets. No, actually, all they wanted for was for him to become one of them. It was their, well, it was their unconscious way of trying to get him on a ball. But it did not work. Then on the third day, something happened to change their entire attitude. As a matter of fact, I have never seen so many shock guys in my life. I wasn't prepared for it either. I have an announcement to make. Now give me your attention. One of the men in this barracks now holds the distinction of having made the highest score in the mechanical aptitude tests. And since you'll never guess who it is, I am going to tell you. Ralph. Dunning, Jr. Oh, You're kidding. What? Ralphie, mama's boy, it ain't true. Oh. Hey, what are you handing her, Sarge? You can't even tie a shoe leg. Hey! Now listen, Dunning. What have you been trying to do? Pull everybody's leg around here? Where'd you figure it would get you? Sarge, honest, I don't even know what you're talking about. Okay, Dunning, I'm sorry. My remarks were uncalled for. When a man scores the way you did, you can only say one word to him. Congratulations. Hooray! Oh, great no, wait a minute. Ralphie. Wait a minute. Hey, 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 hey no, cut it out. Hey, you guys, cut it out. Hey, no, no, no don't on. toss them up in that blanket. <laughs> well, things only got worse for poor Ralphie. He was a marked man. Because of his test score, he was expected to be a whiz, but uh, he was only a dud. They started to lay off him because, after all, you couldn't really hate him. He tried. It's just that, well, one night, he was standing out in front of the barracks. I stopped to talk with him. I guess he needed somebody to talk to. Sarge, I know I make it rough for everybody, but honest, Sarge, I can't help it. Promise you won't breathe this to a soul. Promise. I miss my mother. But don't laugh. Well, now, who's laughing? A guy your age makes a statement like that. What's funny? Well... You and most of these guys here, you've been on your own, I guess. Ever since I can remember, my mother has told me what to do. You see, I was pretty sick as a kid, and she took care of me. My father died before I got out of high school, and my mom and I were always very close. Ralph, why did you join the Air Force? Oh, my mother thought it would be a good idea. Look, every guy wants something. He's got some idea of what he'd like to do. Now, what would you like to do? What's the use of talking about it? Well, now, you can never tell. No, I've forgotten all about it. It would break my mother's heart, and I haven't got the right to do that after all she's done for me. I better turn in now, Sarge. It's getting late. Oh, kid, I wish I could figure you out. Well, each formation in class was a struggle for Ralphie. He hated it. Everything came so hard to him. Now, the fellas even tried to help him, but they didn't know where to begin. So I took a couple of the fellas aside and I said to them, Now, look, you men are on passes tomorrow. Now, why don't a couple of you invite Ralph to come into town with you? Let him eat with you, go to the show, have fun. It would do him a lot of good. Well, Sarge, I asked him. What'd he say? I don't know, he... Got all nervous. He begged off. You know him. I wish I did. Well, it 
turned out Ralph picked up his pass and left the town alone. We didn't find it out till much later on, but here's what happened. So he was walking up the road to the bus stop just beyond the base when he came to a car parked just off to the side. There was a woman standing alongside it. And as Ralph walked by, she said, Are you going to town? Oh, yes, ma'am. I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Something's wrong with my car. Would you stop at the first service station and have them send out a repair man? Would you mind if I took a look? Please do. Would you mind trying to start her? That's what I have been trying to do. One thing I do know, it's not out of gas. Uh-huh. I see. Uh, tell me, ma'am, do you often have trouble with this car? Since the day we bought it. <laughs> I think it's a lemon. Oh, uh, no. No. Do you know anything about engines? Oh, me? No, nothing at all. Uh, then well, how could you fix it? This might take a half hour. Do you have some tools in the trunk? Help yourself. <laughs> Try it now. It's, it's impossible. Take your foot off the gas a minute. Hey, that's it. You fixed it. This is wonderful. My name is Mrs. Wilkes. Do you know my husband, Colonel Wilkes? Oh, I, I, I've heard of him. You don't know how great a favor this is. What's your name? Oh, uh, well, that's not important, ma'am. Well, I'd like to know the name of my benefactor. No, that's all right, ma'am. At least let me give you a lift into town. No, it's all right. I wasn't going to town. I'm just going back to the base. I uh, forgot something. Forget it, please, ma'am. But I don't want to forget it. Come back here. Come back. Well, if he isn't the most unusual young man, why doesn't he want me to know who he is? <laughs> well, young man, modesty can be carried too far. I'll find out who that young genius is if it's the last thing I ever do. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Mama's Boy. And we will return in just one moment for the second act. If you're a service veteran, well, then you think about this for a moment, will you? Are you making the most out of your service gain skills? Well, here's something you should know. You may qualify to enlist in the United States Air Force in a gray that will be a real pleasant surprise to you. The Air Force needs men with training and experience gained in all of the armed forces. If you're skilled in one of these critical jobs needed to keep America's air defense strong, well, then the Air Force offers you an opportunity to put those skills to work to your best advantage. You've already earned credits toward a valuable retirement policy, so why not protect your investment? Your Air Force recruiter has a prior serviceman's folder that will give you full details. Write or visit him right away for your copy. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Mama's Boy. They called him Mama's Boy in his basic training outfit at Sampson Air Force Base, and it was an accurate title. He was old enough to vote, but you can bet he wouldn't do it without his mother's permission. He was scared of his own shadow. He took a vitamin pill every five minutes. He was a trial and tribulation to everyone in his outfit. Well, right now, let's let Sergeant Tully continue the story about Mama's Boy. So this brings us to, I think, the uh, 35th day of Ralphie's basic training. He was called in to see the guidance counselor. Now, after the Air Force has watched you for a while and analyzed your test scores and your personality, experienced guidance counselors suggest what specialty you should follow. Now, these guidance people are really on the ball. Usually, their recommendations follow pretty closely what you yourself wanted and what you're equipped to do. Although some guys are surprised and pleased to discover that the guidance people come up with a latent talent they never suspected they had. Well, nothing came easy for our boy Ralph, even this meeting. I, uh, I heard about it later. It went something like this. Dunning, I wouldn't hesitate for a moment if I were you. Your aptitude test is so indicative, I don't see how you could miss it, auto mechanic school. Mechanic school? Ah, it's a perfect case where the talent of the individual fits in with the needs of the service. Oh. Uh, do, do I have to go to mechanic school? Do you have to? Well, man, don't you want to? Chap like you, the most complicated engines would be a pleasure for you. You'll make real progress rating-wise. Look, you've got yourself a career. Well, uh, 
I'd like to say that I don't want to go. I don't understand. You're a natural. I don't want to go. Don't make me go. Wait a minute, Donnie. Is there something the matter? Don't you feel well? I, I don't want to go to mechanic school. And if you force me to go, I'll... I'll... Donnie, hold it, hold it a minute. We're not forcing you to do anything. What I can't understand is why. Well, I can't talk about it. I, I just don't want to go, that's all. The guidance counselor dropped by to see me afterwards. He said Ralph was so nervous and excited that he figured it would be best to just end the interview right there, let it rest for a while. But this was destined to be Ralph's big day. He got a call to report to the orderly room, and there, waiting to see him, was Colonel Wilkes. Finally tracked you down, Dunning. My wife's a persistent woman. Why'd you run off? What? Uh, say, don't you feel well? Oh, I'm all right, sir. Hmm. But what did you do to the car? Say, do you know it runs perfectly now? Well, you wouldn't let Mrs. Wilkes thank you, so she decided to thank your mother. No. Of course, you deserve it, so she's written to her. You know how women are. I'll bet your mother will get it through when she reads it. Oh, no, sir. Oh, no, no, sir. Say, Dunning, do you feel all right? Hey, Ralph, Ralph. Catch him, he's falling. Rushed him to the hospital, and Ralph was really sick. Naturally, his mother took the first train for Samson. Now, I was there when she showed up. I was there because Ralph begged me not to leave him alone with his mother. Well, that was quite a scene. I want the truth, Ralph. The truth. Do you understand? Mrs. Dunning, your son is actually ill. I suggest you say nothing to excite him. I must know the truth. Now, how could you fix an automobile engine? What do you know about them? Mother, I, I can't help it. All I ever cared about were motors. And because you made me promise not to... Well, I broke my promise, Mother. Afternoons, when I was supposed to be at the library studying, I had a job in a garage. Ralph! I'm sorry, Mother, I lied to you, but... I don't want to go to college. I only want to be a mechanic like Dad. Oh, that's nonsense, and you'll outgrow it. Mrs. Dunning... Your son is sick. But I tell you this. The only way to cure him is to let him alone. That is, for you to let him alone. Sir, that remark is uncalled for. I'm a doctor, madam. And I can see that he's sick because he's been miserable. This barracks sergeant is right here. He can tell you what a terrible time Ralph has had since he's been out in the world. Away from your wing. This boy has a natural gift for mechanics. He must be permitted to develop it. I've had other hopes for him. What about the hopes he's had for himself? I believe I know what's best for my boy. Quite true, madam. But unfortunately, he isn't a boy anymore. Well, I won't make the same mistake I made with his father. Oh? You made a mistake there, too? You're taking advantage of your position, sir. My son is in the Air Force. He's under military control. Therefore, you can afford to be high and mighty. If you were a civilian doctor, I'd send you packing. Oh, would you step this way, please? Sarge... Yeah, Ralph. Sarge, do you realize that's the first time I ever heard anyone talk back to my mother? I don't want your son to hear this. You say you love your boy. I love my son. Why else would I sacrifice everything? Are you willing to do something for him? What? You can have him if you want him. He'll serve out his time with us. We'll spend thousands of dollars teaching him a skill he'll never use. And when his enlistment is over, you'll get him back. He'll do what you tell him. Your dream will come true. But he'll be sick all his life. No, nothing drastic. He'll have colds, headaches, allergies. But that'll be all right. Because it'll give you a chance to mother him and nurse him. How dare you? If you loved him, you'd want him to be well. You'd want him to realize his dream, not yours. Are you game to try an experiment? You've got nothing to lose but your pride. And that's no loss because it's false pride. Tell him he can do whatever he likes. He's free to pursue his interest in mechanics. Ridiculous. Tell him that and watch. Before your very eyes, he'll begin to get better. He'll get color in his cheeks. He'll get a sparkle in his eye. He'll stop being a hypochondriac. I guarantee you he'll leave the hospital tomorrow morning feeling better than he ever has in his life. That's nonsense. It's up to you. 
If you think I'm lying, here's your chance to show me up. Well? Now, Dunning, I think your mother has something to say to you. Oh, mother, before you say a word, please. I had no right to fool you. After all, you sacrificed for me. And, Mom, when my enlistment is over, I decided I'll go to college and I'll work hard. Uh, now, Ralph, you listen to me. You're in the Air Force now. Your, your country is spending a fortune to train you. And isn't it wonderful? They, they want you to do the very thing you like better than, than anything else in the world. Well, Mom. And you'd better be the best mechanic in the Air Force. That's all I have to say. Mom, you don't mean it. You don't mean it. I want to be proud of you. Just as proud as you'll be of yourself. Sarge! Hey, Sarge, I'm going to mechanic school. I'm going to mechanic school. You see? You see, Mrs. Dunning? They let him out of the hospital that night. They couldn't hold him. He took his mother to dinner, and he picked up the check himself, too. I came along, and I knew it was okay as soon as the waiter brought the menu. I'll have the veal cutlet. Ralph, fried food. Uh, what are you having, Mom? Uh, uh, Ralph. Suppose you order for me. You know, many, many times a man is killed with a particular job, yet is unable to find a use for it. Now tell me, has this happened to you? Are you a service veteran with a service gain skill that's going to waste? Well, if you are, then you just listen to me. You may be able to put that skill to work as a member of the United States Air Force. The Air Force needs experience and know-how gained in all the armed forces. If you possess one of the critical skills needed to keep America's air defense strong, well, then you can put that experience to work in the Air Force, and do so at a higher grade with higher pay than you may realize. You've earned credits toward a valuable retirement income, so you protect that initial investment. For full details, write or visit your Air Force recruiter. Ask for the prior serviceman's folder. This folder will show you why, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. <laughs> This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force, and this is Dick Herbert speaking, and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs> <laughs>